In step 5, we compute the p-value. p-value, like the level of significance alpha, is also a probability. So what is p-value? An easy way to remember p-value is to treat it as the probability that the null hypothesis is true. We then use the p-value to make conclusion on our hypothesis test, to accept or reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, if the p-value is large, it means that the probability that the null hypothesis is true, is high. In this case, we will accept the null hypothesis. If the p-value is small, it means that the probability that the null hypothesis is true, is low. And in this case, we will reject the null hypothesis. To compute the p-value, we need to know the type of test. Whether it is a right-tailed test, left-tailed test, or two-tailed test. We also need to know the test statistic, ZS, if population standard deviation, sigma, is known. Otherwise, we will use TS, and the degrees of freedom. For a right-tailed test, the p-value is given by the area to the right of the test statistic, ZS or TS. For example, in step 4, the test statistic, ZS, was found to be 1.75. The p-value for this right-tailed test will be the area to the right of ZS, which is 1.75. This is also the probability of Z greater than 1.75. The table shows that the probability or the area to the right of Z greater than 1.75 is 0.04, or 4%. It is common to expect a positive test statistic when we do a right tail test. This is because we suspect that the sample mean is greater than the hypothesized mean. For a left tail test, the p-value is the area to the left, not the right of the test statistic, ZS or TS. Using the same example in step 4 again, the test statistic, ZS, is 1.75. The p-value for this left-tailed test will be the area to the left of 1.75, and written as probability of Z less than 1.75. This area is 0.96, or 96%. It is common to expect a negative test statistic when we do a left-tailed test. This is because we suspect that the sample mean is less than the hypothesized mean. However, it is uncommon to get a positive test statistic in a left-tailed test, as shown in the above example, or a negative test statistic in a right-tailed test. When this happens, it indicates what the researcher suspected is in the wrong direction. For example, the test statistic shows an increase in weight, while the researcher suspected a decrease in weight, and did a left-tailed test. For a two-tailed test, the p-value is two times the area to the left of the negative test statistic, ZS or TS. The two vertical bars represent absolute value of the test statistic. So it is always area to the left of minus test statistic. Using the same example in step 4 again, the test statistic, ZS, is 1.75. The p-value for this two-tailed test will be two times the area to the left of minus 1.75 and written as 2 times the probability of Z less than minus 1.75. The area to the left of Z less than minus 1.75, is the same as the area to the right of Z greater than 1.75, which is 2 times 0.04, equals 0.08, or 8%. Unlike the one-tailed test, it is perfectly okay to get a positive or negative test statistic in a two-tailed test. This is because we are not sure whether the sample mean is larger, or smaller than the hypothesized mean. In step 6, we learn to make decision or conclusion about the test, whether to accept, or reject the null hypothesis. There are two methods to make decision or conclusion. Method 1 uses the critical region and test statistics. If the test statistic falls on, or inside the critical region, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. Using the example in step 4, the test statistic, ZS, is 1.75. For a right tail test with alpha equal 5%, we know the critical value, Z critical, is 1.645, and the area shaded in blue represents the critical region. The test statistic, ZS, 1.75, falls inside the critical region. 
so the conclusion is reject null hypothesis. Similarly, for a left tail test with alpha equal 5%, the critical value, minus E critical, is minus 1.645. The test statistic, 1.75, does not fall inside the critical region. So the conclusion is accept null hypothesis. Finally, for a two-tailed test with alpha equal 5%, and divide it into two tails, there are two critical values, plus and minus Z critical, and two critical regions. The critical values are plus 1.96 and minus 1.96. The test statistic, 1.75, does not fall inside the critical region. So the conclusion is accept null hypothesis. Method 2 is easier, and simply compares the p-value with a level of significance, alpha. Recall that we can treat p-value as the probability that the null hypothesis is true. Large p-values mean probability that the null hypothesis is true is high, and we accept the null hypothesis. Small p-values mean probability of the null hypothesis is true is low, and we reject the null hypothesis. How small is small? A p-value smaller than or equal to the level of significance is considered small. If p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we accept the null hypothesis. Using the example in step 4, test statistic, ZS, is 1.75. For right-tailed test, the level of significance, alpha, equal 5% is indicated by the area shaded in blue. The p-value, which is the area to the right of ZS, was earlier found to be 4% and is indicated by the area shaded with red lines. P-value, 4%, is less than alpha, 5%. Conclusion, reject null hypothesis. For left tail test, alpha 5%, indicated by the area shaded in blue on the left tail. The p-value, which is the area to the left of ZS, was earlier found to be 96%, and is indicated by the area shaded with red lines. P-value, 96%, is greater than alpha, 5%. Conclusion, accept null hypothesis. For two-tailed test, alpha 5% is divided into two parts, and indicated by the area shaded in blue on the left and right tails. The p-value was earlier found to be 8%, and is indicated by the two areas shaded with red lines. p-value, 8%, is greater than alpha, 5%. Conclusion, accept null hypothesis. The two methods give the same conclusions. Conclusion is affected by the type of test. From the example in step 4, if we have done a right tail test, the conclusion would be reject null hypothesis. However, if we have done a left tailed or two tailed test, the conclusion would have been accept null hypothesis. Conclusion is also affected by the selected level of significance, alpha. What would the conclusion be if we have selected an alpha of 1% in the above example? We would have accepted the null hypothesis in the right tail test as well. We should also select the type of test to perform, and the level of significance at the beginning of the test, and stick to them. We should not change them midway in order to obtain the conclusion we want.